Hello, this is Ting Ying Shi from KCL 2024 summer course Drug Discovery. Today, I'm going to introduce empagliflozin, a drug used for treating heart failure. Approved as an anti-diabetic drug in 2014, empagliflozin is traded in the market with the name Jardians and has now become one of the most common drugs to treat type 2 diabetes by lowering the reabsorption of blood sugar by the kidney. However, the drug has gained significant attention in recent years for its unexpected yet beneficial effects in treating heart failure. What a bonus! Nice. But before we look into the mechanism of the drug treating heart failure, let's take a look at the disease. As is all known, human's heart is like a big pump, sending oxygenated blood to different parts of the body and oxygen-free blood back to the heart. You can compare it to the conveyor machine in the beer factory, where empty bottles are constantly transported for canning, and then the bottles of good beer are sent out to entertain everyone. Heart failure, on the contrary, means the heart gets unable to supply enough blood to meet body's demands. There are two types of heart failure. Systolic heart failure is a state where the heart gets less able to squeeze out blood each beat. It is caused by, for example, genetic mutation, myocarditis, or valvular disease. I'd like to describe the state as the beer canning system gets less productive due to more function of some components. Diastolic heart failure, on the other hand, is the state where ventricles are not filled quite enough while the heart squeezing capacity remains normal. This also leads to reduced cardiac output and is often caused by cardiomyocyte hypertrophy, fibrosis and inflammation, and is preceded by chronic comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and impaired kidney function. For me personally, the situation is like the beer factory getting less orders due to some external factors. So here is the form summarizing the possible causes of heart failure. Amazingly, impagliflozin can relieve many of them, thereby playing a role in treating heart failure. Let's see how it works one by one. Number one, anti-inflammatory and anti-fibrotic properties. Chronic inflammation and fibrosis sickens the heart wall, impair myocardial structure, finally contributing to the progression of heart failure. Impagliflozin, however, has demonstrated anti-inflammatory and anti-fibrotic effects in preclinical studies, generating long-term benefits in preventing adverse cardiac remodeling and preserving cardiac function. Number two, diuretic and natriuretic effects. Kidneys play an important role in the reabsorption of glucose. The reabsorption is mainly performed by a transporter called SGLT2, which act as a gate allowing glucose to flow from kidney tubules back to the body. In this scenario, impagliflozin serves as an inhibitor of SGLT2, lowering the glucose reabsorption. That's the mechanism for treating type 2 diabetes, which is the original purpose of developing impagliflozin. More sugar for excretion means there should be more fluid to dissolve it, and this increases urine. What's more, as SGLT is short for sodium-dependent glucose transporters. The inhibition of glucose reabsorption affects the ion reabsorption synchronously, also leading to increased sodium excretion. Altogether, diuretic and natriuretic effects of impagliflozin helps reduce fluid overload and relieve hypertension in patients with heart failure, thereby easing the workload on the heart. Number three. Cardio renal protection. Heart failure often coincides with renal dysfunction, as the kidneys and cardiovascular system are closely intertwined. Impagliflozin's effects extend to renal protection by reducing glomerular hypofiltration and intraglomerular pressure, which are common in heart failure related renal impairment. By improving renal function, impagliflozin helps maintain fluid and electrolyte balance, further supporting cardiovascular health. Number four, other effects. Apart from relieving the inducement of heart failure, as is mentioned in the previous point, impagliflozin also stimulates metabolic shift and neurohormonal modulation. 
What's a metabolic shift? It means empagliflozin promotes the utilization of ketone bodies and fatty acids as alternative energy sources for the heart muscle, potentially improving myocardial efficiency and reducing reliance on glucose metabolism. This metabolic adaptation could contribute to preserving cardiac function and mitigating the progression of heart failure. Then, what about a neurohormonal modulation? Heart failure is characterized by dysregulated neurohormonal pathways, including the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone systems and sympathetic nervous system activation. You can compare it to a busy road with a broken traffic light. Empagliflozin has been shown to modulate these pathways, leading to reduced neurohormonal activation. By inhibiting RAAS and sympathetic nervous system overactivity, empagliflozin helps mitigate vessel constriction, sodium retention, and maladaptive cardiac remodeling associated with heart failure. In conclusion, Empagliflozin leverages its originally intended anti-diabetic mechanisms to provide substantial cardiovascular benefits. Through its multifaceted effects on metabolism, renal function, inflammation, and neurohormonal pathways, empagliflozin addresses key pathophysiological aspects of heart failure, ultimately improving quality of life for patients. That's all of my presentation. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.